Hello, this is Tuna Tuju, recording for CMP 160 Object Oriented Programming Course. We're covering Chapter 4 titled Asymptotic Algorithm Analysis. Let's start with the introduction. First, let's discuss our incentives for studying the asymptotic analysis of an algorithm. Consider a scenario where we want to purchase a, an accounting program software for our company. There could be several alternatives. Say we have two alternative software to uh, purchase and we want to decide which one is better. For the sake of the example, we are going to assume that the prices of the two software are the same and also the functionalities are the same. That means both softwares perform exactly what we want. So our only concern is which one's perform, performing better. One thing we can do at this point is we can try both software if the companies allow us to have trials and enter all input data for both software, run both programs, measure their performance and decide. This is definitely not the best approach because first of all, it requires that the companies allow us to try their software and more important, entering all company data into the software is not typically feasible in most cases. So we should find some other mechanism to manage this. It's another uh, scenario. Consider a case where we're developing a, a web search algorithm, something like a web spider like we have in Google search, Yahoo, Yandex, whatever. And uh, before developing this software, we want to make sure that our algorithm performs well under different conditions. So uh, what we can do again is implement the alternative algorithms and see how they perform. But of course, we would not, to, uh, we would not want to spend so much time, effort and money for developing several algorithms and then picking the best. So again, we need a method for uh, finding out which algorithm would perform better before we implement these algorithms. So that's what we are searching for. So we need some methodic approach to assess the performance of, of an algorithm. Uh, when we say assessing the performance of an algorithm, we are actually not interested in how the algorithm performs under light load because almost all algorithms will perform well under light load. But we are specifically interested in what happens to the algorithm, to the performance of the algorithm as the problem size grows. That's why actually we're interested in uh, defining uh, the performance when the algorithm uh, or the software is running uh, uh, under uh, huge scenarios. So we're interested in the asymptotical behavior of the algorithm when the problem size grows. And we call this the scalability of the algorithm. So we say, our algorithm scales up well or not. So scalability is again a key factor here. Uh, when we're talking about the performance of an algorithm, there's several criteria we should be looking at. One of these criteria is the execution time, which is actually uh, related to the number of instructions that are being executed to perform that specific task. But there are also other criteria, like memory requirement is another criterion. We call it also the memory footprint of our program. So it means the amount of memory required to run that program to achieve that task. Similarly, the disk access is another criterion. We would like to know how many times you need to access the disk for a specific operation. 
or similarly how many packets are being transmitted over the internet because at the end of the day this uh, will show how much internet you're using or uh, the number of times you're calling the methods because the methods actually cause a lot of overhead uh, in the operating system so uh, these are the criteria to be uh, considered while talking about the performance we will be specifically talking about one of the uh, of these criteria the execution time but what we are going to discuss uh, in the chapter uh, is actually uh, it reflects to all of the other criteria so we'll always talk about the execution time but you can apply a similar uh, approach also for say memory footprint or the network access whatever so you might say why are we dealing with this why don't we directly measure the performance like we can have a start uh, stopwatch we can start the time uh, just before starting the task run the task and when the task ends immediately stop the stopwatch and see how much time has elapsed and say this is my measurement this is the performance of my algorithm well this is not the best idea uh, first of all uh, your software could be requiring different resources and these resources could also be used by the other applications running on the same computer system so the performance you have measured it's just a single measurement it's not true in general so we cannot depend on that value also it heavily depends on the architecture which means on your computer it was performing well but my, my computer is slightly different say I have a uh, faster memory or less uh, disk space or uh, slower CPU so it heavily depends on the architecture and uh, the, it also depends on uh, many things about the runtime condition like the race cases between several uh, applications trying to use the same resources it depends on the scheduling of the operating system there are many criteria that could affect this measurement so the measurement typically is not a dependable approach also consider a case where we have two different uh, two different uh, computers assume everything uh, for these two computers are exactly the same except for the CPU one of the C uh, computers has 3 gigahertz CPU while the other one has only 1.5 gigahertz CPU would you expect the performance of the uh, software running on the first computer to be twice as fast as the one running on the second one not necessarily for an analogy consider a car that has a 100 horsepower engine which can uh, run at a maximum speed of say 200 kilometers per hour now if you rectify the engine of the uh, car to 200 horsepower do you think that the maximum speed will also double to 400 kilometers per hour well definitely not you probably did not uh, see many cars running at 400 kilometers per hour on the roads so that means doubling the uh, underlying resources does not necessarily imply that the performance will also be doubled so you really need to look at many things it's not that easy